Good everyone, organized today, and today we have a review on the Storm Artillery Wagen M43 1944 modification. And this tank is actually surprisingly fun. And I know this is going to sound like I'm contradicting myself here, but um, obviously you've seen the review for the STRV M40L, the light tank that I did not like at all. And I said I wasn't going to review the STRV M41 S2, that little Skoda looking thing, and also the Largo 1. I've gone back on myself. I took it out with Asma Maseng and his, well, his son Chris a couple of nights ago, and all I will say is get that saber around and it will redeem itself. But anyway, we're not here to discuss that. Obviously, I've still got the Lago Wonder Spade, but here we are with the Storm Artillery Wagon M43. So this tank is based on the S or the STRV M41, which is uh, it's this one, and you'll be su you'll be surprised what this thing can actually do. But um, this is based off it, and it's actually a pretty effective tank destroyer. Now the gun can be a bit debatable. It it it's hit and miss. It's certainly better than the STRV M40L's gun, but it can still be hit and miss. Now the front armor is 50 mm thick, and it it saved me a lot actually. A lot of people don't really know where to shoot this thing. They think the sides are going to be extremely weak, so they shoot here, and obviously it's angled 50 mm plates. They then shoot here, looking for an easy penetration, but um, no, this this area has literally no actual areas of penetration, unless you was to hit just here, and even then, that is auto-bounce. You could maybe try hitting here with a big enough high explosive round, but I severely doubt it's going to do anything. There's an additional piece of track here, which, to be honest, you could probably put additional tracks on the lower glacis and over on the left-hand side of the vehicle here. So maybe this vehicle could have some add-on armor modification of some sort. Now the armor is not going to protect you against everything. I noticed a lot of stat padders in Chiha Kai's, um, B1 Bizzers, things like that. And the Chiha Kai is dealable. I mean, it, it's a Chiha Kai. It has basically no armor. I mean, the turret's okay, but yeah, this this thing is going to be a nightmare to handle like against B1s because the gun has limited penetration but has very very good shrapnel effect. Now the one thing I will say is at long range and mid range this gun is relatively inaccurate I noticed. The 75mm does not seem to have very good spread. It seems to want to spread its shots out extremely far so one mod I'm actually going to say to prioritize is the adjustment of fire. This to me makes a big world of difference. So in terms of shells, you start out with a M something M40 shell. I'm, I'm not saying that SLPPRJ. If I knew it, I'd try and pronounce it, as you know. But I'm not saying it. You've then got a HE round, which again cap carry a couple because these SDR well these are SARVs just don't have them like any machine guns at the moment. You do get some of the later tiers from what I've seen. There's a smoke round here which should be able to come in handy. There's the upgraded M40B. This is the primary shell you're going to want to be firing once you get it. Obviously it is a rank 4 mod so the stock round will do you well. And then there is an optional armor piercing high explosive. I personally wouldn't main this round. But keep a couple. If you're getting into a lower tier match, keep a couple of these. The penetration is good enough to cut through most vehicles and the Post penetration effect is insane. So, like I say, this thing is surprisingly fun to drive, and obviously, because it's like a, it's kind of like a stug. It it feels nice to drive. The armor's good, and a lot of people seem to shoot around the gun area. But obviously, there are parts that overlap with the main frontal plate. So this thing's actually got pretty trollish armor. And even if people go just up here to try and maybe force an over pet, like an overmatch on the upper front of plate, the 50 moment plate actually does overlap in areas of it, so it's got pretty reasonable armour. Now the sides, 
this is where it starts to fall. 13 millimeters thick on the actual casemate, 15 millimeters on the side, 15 on the rear, and 13 on the rear of the casemate. It, it's not very well protected on its side. So if you get flanked, you're dead. But that's mostly the case for any SBG. Let's be realistic. But otherwise, this thing was actually quite a bit of fun to drive. It had a decent punch with its gun. And as you can see, fair of hired shit teams in it, as is becoming a running gag. I've, d I've noticed that a lot. Whenever I play Swedish tanks, I get a lot of bad teams. Like, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. But 24 kills, 0 air kills, and 2 deaths. And obviously, 37% win rate. 2 wins in this bloody tank. But it's not the tank's fault. Most of my death, well, my, both of my deaths, sorry, were by players shooting the gun barrel. There appears to be a lot of stat padders out and about now because obviously they want to farm the new Swedish tanks for nice and easy kills because obviously they won't be spaded and not be as competitive. And a lot of scumbag players will go for your gun barrel. So, take that into account. Prioritize parts and mobility if you can. And once you get the M40B option, go for this shell. It's a much better improvement over the standard shell. But otherwise, this thing's a pretty solid all-rounder. I quite like playing it. It's got 10 degrees of gun depression. And it's just pretty solid overall. I mean, it's a good, solid TD. Now, you may have saw the um, French light tank combo meeting a sub. Yeah. Let, let's just say... I got my arse ended to me, and I'm going to point out my mistake in that battle, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I've still got the um, the Lars, Paul, Eric, or however you say it, um, history chat to record. I'll be doing that today, so don't you worry about that. So, let's get this thing, and let's get this replay on the go, because this... I know it's replays take a bit longer to get going now. So as you can see, I've got 40 of the upgraded M40B and I've got 10 APHE. That's pretty standard. I mean, you've got enough ammunition to cover yourself. You've got enough. You've got the armor to protect yourself. But because this is a down tier, which I got no fucking down tiers, I got one down tier and a freaking M40L, and yet I get all the down tiers in this thing. Sorry about that. I I don't understand like why just, there we go that sword. Um I, I don't understand why the the game gives me loads of down tiers in SBG but doesn't give me them in a light tank. Like it makes no sense. Maybe because this thing's ranked two and obviously a lot of people are still grinding the early tiers of Sweden, I don't know. It, it's just it, it's just weird the matchmaking at the moment. So I'm going up to one of my favourite spots at the moment, and this is really where I would recommend going in this vehicle and vehicles with at least 10 degrees of gun depression. Chris and Asma Masseng, take note, this is a good spot. I've, I've shown them a couple of my spots and they seem to like them. That's for definite, they, they really do enjoy my spots. Now the gun you'll you'll notice in the optics when um when I actually get to firing because I have to I have to get in a certain spot to actually get this gun to get on target. But you'll notice that to actually you, if you look at the actual sight, the range differences are quite severe, and that doesn't help the guns in accuracy. If you're obviously ranging in a target, you will obviously have to account for that. I don't know why, but this engine sounds a bit loud. I, I thought it did. <laughs> you, know, you know when you just get that used to hearing an engine sound? It just doesn't sound right. But that was actually a pretty lucky shot. I didn't think that shot would actually penetrate. So I go for an APHE round here, and if you look, the scope slightly changed there. The APHE has slower velocity than the AP. But when it pens, it completely blows the living shit out of anything that it bends. That's been evident. And that's kill number one. And here comes the gun inaccuracy. Even with adjustment of fire, the gun inaccuracy, and fair enough, I am on a slight slope, 
but the gun inaccuracy is still there and it's still present. And I'm trying to range this AMC 35 in and I'm just thinking, how's this gun not hitting him? But eventually, it pens and sets off his ammo. That's the post pen doing its job right there. It really does have good post penetration damage. But in an up tier, this gun will struggle. Same with the 37mm. This weapon isn't exactly the most effective, but it's certainly better shrapnel wise with the armor piercing round and is just as capable with the APHE as the 37mm that you may be familiar with. And that's the thing, like. And even then, that almost killed him in one shot, and that didn't even hit the fighting compartment. But unfortunately, a. So what was it? A STRVM31 took the kill on that, which I don't mind. I mean, I think I needed how many mods was I off? I think I was like two mods, well, sorry, three mods off Spain in this thing. You're also going to see a bug with this vehicle, which I noticed, and it was a very unusual bug. You'll see what I mean when I point it out. But let's just say it was one of the weirdest bugs I've ever encountered. Uh, well, I, I don't know how this guy got there, but yeah, whatever. Deals with him nicely. Third kill. But you're going to see just how weird the actual bug is. And I don't know what happened with that shot, but I think I'm loading normal armor piercing because it has better shrapneling effect than the armor piercing high explosive at this point. So I'm trying to get this LVT ranged in, shall we say. But even on a light amphibious vehicle like that, the 75mm has great shrapnel effect. That is until the, tr the transmission eats it. But this shot here is a hull break, and yet the second one wasn't. And they claim that they have fixed the... They claim that they've fixed the hull break bug. Uh, no, they haven't. They, they, they haven't, and... Yeah, the, the shrapnel effect will do that to an ammo rack, so there's that. I think this is where I get the bug, actually, thinking about it. Or is this another guy? I'm not sure, but... I know there's a bit where either a H39 or a H35 opens up on me, and it's where I get the bug. But you'll just see exactly what the bug is about this tank, and... That's really what threw me off it. But at the same time, it was the first and only encounter with the bug, so I, I can't really say that it's... I can't really say, like, it's a major bug, but you're going to see what I mean. So, it's a H35, and I'd just like to point out where we are currently. So... The front armor of the SIG, remember, is 50 millimeters thick. This part here is 15. Even at the angle that little crappy H35 is going to shoot at, he's not going to be able to penetrate the front slope. Let us continue. So I'm saying, I've got him ranged in now, and I'm trying to shoot him and penetrate his tank, which this gun can do quite well. It's when I take the hit right there. Now what appears to have happened is, is I actually don't know, but what he's just done there is folks, he's hit around the gun area, penetrated the tank, yet it is 50mm thick, went through the tank, hit the engine block, and set the engine on fire. Now I'm no expert, but I don't think that little shitty 37mm with armor piercing composite rigid which, even at point-blank range, cannot penetrate this tank. I'll just wait for the smoke to clear so I can have a better look. If you look here, this is where the shot has hit. Even then, that is 100 millimeters thick. Quite clearly, there is a severe bug with this vehicle. And you're going to have to watch that. And obviously, I'm thinking, what the fuck has he been that? But obviously I'm trying to repair the tank at this point, and again, he's going for the gunshot again. 
I, I don't understand it. Like, it was so weird. I was caught completely off guard, and obviously now I'm completely disabled. But the armor's still holding, and I'm able to kill him, but... And that's the end of my contribution, but that that really threw my impressions off on this vehicle. But does that mean it's bad because Gaijin can't model properly? No, it's actually really sufficient. It's a great vehicle with a decent gun, fair enough, in and up tier, it's going to struggle, as all Swedish tanks apparently do struggle in up tier. And, yeah, this thing has a character. It's, it's got good frontal armor, especially if you keep it at range. And, yeah, I like it. But anyway, I'm going to let you guys off. I hope you enjoyed today's review on the Sav M43 1944. I'm going to try and work on a 1946 version as soon as I can after I finish that bloody Lago one. And I will see you all on the next one.